Have you ever felt like you're not in control? Have you ever felt powerless, filled with uncertainty about what things meant and what would happen? I think everybody here must at least sometimes feel this way. I know I do, but I used to feel like that much more often. The thing is, I can be a very controlling person since I was very young. When I came into the school, a nine-year-old child, the girls in my class were divided into two enemy clans, which were always fighting. I eventually convinced the leaders of the two groups to make peace so they could all be friends. Well, you might think, this doesn't sound controlling. You were being a good mediator. But I wasn't satisfied. I felt like the two groups had diverged so much that they didn't know each other anymore. So I created a schedule for each school break for a week, planning which girl should play with whom so they could all renovate their friendship. And of course, I was frustrated when they obviously didn't comply. Now, does this sound controlling? Sure, I was being kind of a leader, a mediator, but not a very good one. And why is that? Well, that's what I want to answer at the end of this TED Talk. I've also always been a very curious person. For as long as I can remember, I've wanted to know how everything worked on the smallest of the smallest scale. My infinite chains of why could drive even the most patient teachers insane. And growing up, I developed a love for science as a way to understand every single thing. But one day I realized that one of the reasons why I love this pursuit of knowledge so much is that knowing more made me feel more in control. If I understood how things worked, I could influence them to better fulfill my goals. And that made me feel good. In fact, according to Joseph Hallinan in Psychology Today, a sense of control is associated with better physical and mental health. Robinson and Lachman also found that the perception of control leads to greater cognitive performance, which in turn typically brings about an even greater sense of control. So it's a virtuous cycle. And it's not just psychological. For example, the knowledge that water evaporates at 100 degrees Celsius allows us to distill it. We get control over the composition of water. We can then perform experiments with substances dissolved in this water without the influence of impurities. So we can get better explanations of physical phenomena. This is a basic principle in most scientific experiments. If you want to know how something works, you have to control all other variables that might affect your results. So basically, knowledge gives us control, and control gives us knowledge. That's wonderful. But of course, it couldn't be perfect. Because as I was growing up, things were becoming more and more complex. I noticed increasingly more aspects of my life that I couldn't control, despite maybe knowing what was going on. The problem with this idea is that the world is simply too complicated for us to understand or control everything. If the, even if there was a way to know the position and speed of every single particle in the universe, it would be impossible to predict where they would be in the future or what changes could be made to affect the results to happen the way you want. We couldn't do that for basically three reasons. First of all, as scientists perfected their measuring instruments, they realized that some properties couldn't be measured more precisely without the loss of precision from other properties. For example, the more precision you try to get when measuring the position of a particle, the less precisely you can know its speed. This is referred to as the Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. And even in just one measurement, there's always a limit on how precise you can be. And when trying to predict the future state of something from its present state, every decimal place in this measurement matters. This is because of something called chaos theory. 
even in a deterministic system, that is, if all particles can be described using only classical predictable physics laws, you wouldn't be able to predict states too far away in the future as any subtle uncertainty in the initial values could lead to a huge difference, like in the butterfly effect. In addition, with the development of quantum mechanics, it was discovered that many things are not as deterministic as we thought. The world can't be described using only these classical physics laws that I talked about. Because in quantum mechanics, the particles don't have a specific state before they are measured, but a specific probability of being in a certain state. The only way of knowing the state that the particle will be in is by measuring it. You can't know it or predict it beforehand. So thanks to these three reasons, you can conserve your belief in free will. Don't worry, your future is not laid out. However, it's kind of hard to conserve your belief in control. And whenever I felt like I couldn't control something, I felt completely powerless. But science also, also taught me a very important thing. Science always has some uncertainty in its measurements, in its theories, and in its conclusions. When you are not based in some sort of faith or belief, but on facts which can be changed and be built up on, you will never be totally sure. For example, just because every time you drop something, it falls, it doesn't necessarily mean that it will fall the next time. And this uncertainty is exactly what drives scientific discoveries. Being uncertain is what drives us to keep wondering, keep asking questions, and keep trying to improve our explanations. And the fact that we will never reach the highest peak where all can be seen and known is what is allows us to never stop climbing. And just because not every variable can be controlled in some complex systems, it doesn't mean that we can't reach explanations about them. These systems challenge us to find new methods of looking at things. In fact, some of the greatest discoveries in science were made as a result of pure luck, like when Fleming discovered penicillin, or even intuition, like when an apple fell on Isaac Newton's head and he thought about the theory of gravity. Although I think that's just a myth. But this ability that our brains have to look at things and intuitively find explanations about them is something that could still not be mimicked by artificial intelligence because it is part of what makes us human. Even in our own life, there are things that we can't really understand rationally, but that make perfect sense when you look at them from an emotional perspective. Like for me, the joy that I feel when I'm playing music or the fear that I have of bees. You could try to explain them scientifically, but to reduce these sorts of things to facts is simply to deprive them of their meaning, their emotional meaning. And to understand that we will never understand everything is not to throw in the towel, quite the opposite. It's liberating to think that we will always have more to learn, otherwise the world would be quite boring, right? And accepting that not every phenomenon needs an explanation, that not every question has an answer, and that not everything needs to be under my control, has made me start to look at life with a different perspective. I can now find beauty in the uncertain. And I realized that lack of control doesn't mean lack of power it actually impels me to continue moving forward. This newfound realization has been really important to me because I noticed that, like I talked about at the beginning of this talk, my mental health was very dependent on my sense of control. The most stressful times in my life were not necessarily those where I had more things to do, but when I felt like I couldn't control things. And I think I've become much more peaceful because I've become much less controlling. Well, it's a work in progress. I can still get more irritated than I should 
when somebody doesn't format the document the way I told them to, or when my computer doesn't work the way I want it to. But I think it has also made me a better leader, because now I understand that to lead is not to control. It's not to force little girls to follow arbitrary playing schedules or to tell everyone exactly what to do and expect them to do it perfectly. But rather, leading implies giving your team the freedom to express themselves. A good leader is there to listen, to inspire, and to create an environment of trust where people are open and comfortable to share their ideas and feedback so that the creativity and the potential of the whole team can be harnessed. More minds think better than one. So what's the use of having all these brilliant minds if they're all repressed and blindly following the command of only one? Just like a control experiment can only discover so much, a control group of people can only go that far. Do you want to go further? Sometimes you have to let go.